Hello everybody and welcome to the first major update about the new organ. We've been talking about the new organ for a long time now. We're, I'm recording this on the 8th of October 2021 and we've been talking about the organ I think since around March. Yesterday I went over to Biddeford to Renatus to see the new organ being built and I will take you through everything I know so far about the new organ starting at the very beginning with this design and going all the way up to even seeing uh, Martin the master craftsman an unofficial title <laughs> seeing him actually making the organ so let's start at the very beginning We're not going to quite go back to the very beginning because you know about that already, the conception of the organ and why we're doing it. But the next step on from that is surely um, seeing the design of the instrument. Well, this design here shows the three different perspectives of the organ. Looking straight on, side view, which incidentally we'll see more of later on in actual photographs, and bird's eye view. This uh, view here is enlarged on the right hand side of the screen here, showing how the thumb pistons are laid out, how the toe pistons are laid out, generals, sequences. What we can uh, look at now is this design, uh, which is obviously drawn on a computer, becoming a reality. So if I go down here and click that button there, we can see you know what that is, don't you? <laughs> That's an empty pedal board. Let's just talk about some of the details in here, which spring to my mind. The curved wood, um, we'll get more into that in a minute. The beautiful finish around the edges here. Again, the curves, the dovetail corners here. Let's just go on to the next picture, which shows these dovetail um, things in more detail, I must admit, I didn't, I'd never heard of the term dovetails um, until a few days ago. I sent this picture to, I'm not na just name dropping, I promise, I don't do that. But I sent this to the, the deputy managing director, no less, of Harrison and Harrison. And he said, very nice dovetails. And I said, uh, you're going to have to show me which part that is. And it's this, it's the, it's the way the, the wood uh, comes together like a jigsaw and you, you can't see it on these pictures but the way um, they've managed to join those bits of together uh, bits of wood together is phenomenal you run your hand over it you can barely feel how, uh, where one piece of wood ends and another piece of wood starts it's details like that which really set this uh, company Renatus apart from other companies in my view let's go on Pedal board from another angle. All these holes at the top here are uh, quite simply where each pedal, <clears throat> excuse me, each pedal is going to go. Um, it's going to be toe sprung. So the, the pressure and the mechanism which provides the weight and the spring is all at the, the toe end. It just shows you a bit more detail. Look at all of those. Now, I'll give it a prize to anyone watching who knows already which part that is. <laughs> Do you have any idea what part that is yet of the pedal board? Okay, well, let me just bring up, an, uh, bring up another picture. So this is the actual, um, that's the actual pedal board at York, um, which is obviously what we're replicating. This is called the toe sweep here. And you can see the wood is at a curved angle like that on each side. That's a quite, a, um, quite a, an advanced, to, uh, in, in want of a better phrase, um, a craftsmanship detail. You know, bending wood like that is not easy. It doesn't come off the tree like that. 
So they've replicated that. If I now go back to perhaps put them side by side, that would work, wouldn't it? So this piece of wood here is actually the toe sweep here. Let's go back to full screen. Aha! Now this is uh, the left-hand side of a console being put together. Let me just put that next to the design picture. So it uh, will allow you... Sorry about that picture of me, which keeps popping up. You don't want to see a picture of me. <laughs> You've got enough of me here. There it is. Look. So that is obviously that part there in a very early uh, conception. It looks much more finished later on. You'll have to wait. So you have the, the left side and the right side there being put together. The, the wood here, the curved wood, is so beautifully consistent. It's all done by machine and it's really quite um, clear that it has. It's so smooth. Notice at the bottom, there's nothing around the bottom of the um, this big piece of wood here. However, in a few pictures time, that evolves. Okay, so that's, that's now a, going to be a cupboard. Bear with me. The guy on the right there is Martin. And Martin is, um, so he's the he's there. This company's top um, console builder. Um, uh, I guess you could call him a, a joiner by um, by trade. He is one of the finest console builders in the country. And he's probably built more consoles single-handedly um, than most other people in this country. Now that, by definition, puts him as one of the finest builders of consoles, organ consoles, in the world. And that's quite um, an accolade. <laughs> I've actually got a video of him doing something very similar in that position later on. Ah, so this is now the bottom of the console. I said it evolved. So there's actually now um, the bottom section of it, which really finishes it off. It obviously isn't finished there. And you can see on this picture how it's um, molded or joined together. I don't know what that's called, but it's obviously the it's the table, like the middle part of the console where the, the manuals will sit in the middle here. If you look on the left here, you can see these curves and you should be able to recognize them on this side. So under this, under all of the, um, the stops and the woodwork there sits something very similar to this. It almost acts like the central uh, support of the console, a bit like a, um, a joist or, or an RCJ, you know, if you're building. Um, beautiful um, American oak wood, thick, it's solid, and it feels very, very nice indeed. The colour of the wood, incidentally, will be as close to this York console as possible. Possibly, just possibly, a fraction lighter. Let's go on. Let's go on to the next picture. What's next? Oh, there's Martin. And you can see the, 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 um, the table uh, joined to the right-hand compartment. Compartment, that's not the right word, but you know what, I'm, what I mean. Aha! Now, this picture is essentially in its current state. You can see the pedal board approximately where it's going to be. This hole here um, is going to be a cupboard. There's also going to be a cupboard on the following side. Computer, computers, should I say, are going to go inside there. And on this side, we're going to have a music storage area just to keep any clutter out of the room. It's going to be cluttered inside of the organ full of um, hymn books and all of that sort of stuff. Later on, you'll see Martin um, actually cutting this door down to shape. He's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant.
That marks the end of the photos which Colin has been teasing me with over the past few weeks. And we're now going to have a look at the photos and videos I took myself at Renatus uh, yesterday. And we should start with the stops. A bit of an update with the stops. So before I tell you what's going on here, let me just show you the most exciting unboxing video you've ever seen. I'm going a bit overkill of 130 odd stops. Oh, so look, they even come in a, like a posh, recyclable bit of cardboard. So these, these are long row stops. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. This is how they feel. So this is one of ours. This is going to be the um, 32 Contra Bombard. This one. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to go right over there. Riveting stuff. So, <laughs> what's going on here? Well, that's a very fine question. This isn't one of my stops. It's the same uh, type of stop, but actually this, the, the head here, the connection is a bit different. This is a prototype, and this has been innovated by Renatus and specifically by Colin himself. This is inspired by one of those banana connectors which you um, use to connect uh, speaker wires into the back of a speaker. And you might just be able to see on the right here, one of these uh, prongs, is actually just bent out a fraction. Now the first prototype that we had, all of these prongs were equally circular and they pushed into um, the end here. A little bit like this. Let me just let's have a look at a video. So this is this is Colin now pulling out quite firmly the stop from the end of the solenoid. And then on the way back in, you have to push, push it in with quite a bit of force. And then out again. Now this solution here, this earlier prototype, you push the stop in and it will rotate like that. When I saw the prototype, I did suggest that we might have a solution um, or they could come up with a solution which prevents it from the stop from rotating once it's in. Now, if I go back to the first picture, this is prototype two, where this one prong, and these are, these are really firm. I, I tried to push it back in and I couldn't push it in. One of them is actually just um, protruding from the others. Now, what's going to happen in the stop, in the, I don't know what this is called, the circle here, um, there's going to be a little, little groove at the bottom, or wherever. The stop can only essentially go in in one way. Therefore, it won't be able to rotate. An excellent solution there, Colin. Thank you very much. <laughs> What I can now show you is a very first glance at the actual keyboards being used on our organ. These videos have been sent to us uh, directly from the company making them, UHT, and I don't quite know what's going, in, going on in the videos, so perhaps you will know and perhaps you'll be able to leave me a comment explaining in great detail, as some of you do, what is going on. Let's watch them together. What I can tell you is I have played a number of UHT keyboards and in fact even though our keyboards weren't at the workshop yesterday there were a number of other customers uh, keyboards and every time I play them I just think these are such a classy um, keyboard. 
the, the, the way they feel is just it's what I would want to feel and touch on um, you know if I went to York or Westminster Abbey or any other marvelous cathedral in England and around the world those are the sorts of keyboards that I would want to be playing if you have, if you have a nice keyboard with a nice touch that really inspires good playing and good articulation it's so so important How about we now look at the photos and videos that I took of the organ myself yesterday. These are the most up-to-date photos of the instrument. Well, what's going on here then? Some of you organ uh, geeks will know that uh, Martin is there measuring the distance between the bottom manual and middle D on the pedal board. Quiz question for you guys. What distance do you think, or what distance should that be based on uh, British organ building guidelines? Leave me, let me know in the comments. That pedal board isn't our pedal board. Uh, that was there uh, because I sat on this organ bench, which is actually going down to Winborn Minster at some point. Um, I sat on that to make sure the dimensions, the height felt correct. It's very important when playing a console like this that the proportions feel right. It's just It's starting to come together there, isn't it? It's just looking like a really classy piece of kit. Let's see what's next. <laughs> Hot news! There will be a touch screen on the organ despite me saying many times and over a long period that there will be no touch screens on the organ. Well, I'll eat my words, shall I? There is going to be a touch screen on the organ and it's going to look just like that. That's going to be a draw, which will obviously go right underneath. And actually, it's a, just a convenience thing. That's going to have Hauptwerk um, running on it. it. Just will allow me to just press whichever, whatever I want to press without having to get up. Um, but when it's pushed away, won't be able to see it. There'll also be a draw on this side, um, same size, but that one will actually just be a storage area for pencils and rubbers, uh, maybe some post-it notes and that sort of thing. What's next? <laughs> so that's looking at it from the front. You can see how my console might look in the near future. It will look like that. Can you see the similarity? Remarkable, isn't it? So now let's have a look now at Martin um, doing some work on the organ itself.
So basically it's my intention between now and organ delivery to go over to the workshop probably two more times um, to make sure that the measurements and the proportions and dimensions are as we'd expect. So the swell pedals will be one of the next big things to make sure they're in the right place. Uh, the location of the toe pistons on those toe sweeps, they need to be in the right location as well. And the good thing, the wonderful thing about um, Colin and the, his company Renatus, he's, he's so willing to have me um, just pop over just to make sure things are going okay. And obviously he's happy for me to share all these photos as well. I'm very, very happy with his um, working relationship and um, enthusiasm about the project. I couldn't be happier. Um, what else is there just to briefly mention the computer? Um, we will probably be upgrading the uh, Hauptwerk computer as well. A lot of you will know that just there have been some issues uh, recently with my current uh, computer and and or the console itself uh, ciphering. It's very, very irritating, um, particularly when it's doing it, uh, when it does it whilst I'm live with you guys. So we'll probably start afresh with a new computer. I'll spec that up, but that will be an investment um, in the new year. Um, and then also we will be updating the, um, the speakers in the uh, music room. So I've, I've already got a new subwoofer. Um, it's a RHEL subwoofer. It's rather um, epic, you could say. Um, that's going to be installed when the new organ arrives. We also need to have a look at some floor standing speakers to complement the subwoofer. So as of today, I haven't chosen any floor speakers. If you have any inside knowledge or any recommendations for floor standing speakers, which would complement that RHEL subwoofer, please do let me know in the comments. I think, in all honesty, that's, that's as much information as I can give you today. That's all I know. And we are still on um, track to have the organ delivered by the end of November. Uh, Colin, one of his next tasks is to start engraving the uh, stop heads themselves. Um, they, they do that in-house and we are going to match the uh, Harrison Harrison font. It's worth pointing out that the font is actually a new font. H&H uh, &H do all of their engraving in-house as well, and we're able to um, to match the font um, as best as we can. So that's very exciting. I think that's probably it, guys. So I think until the next big update, which might be in four weeks or so, um, I will provide you a bit of information over on the community tab and over on Patreon as well. Patrons get always get um, the information first. Um, but I will just keep you... Um, and also on the BIS Organist Association on Facebook. Go and check that out as well if you're not already a member of that. So until um, I see you in those various formats, I ought to say cheerio and finish my coffee because before it gets too cold got decorators in the house <laughs> so, so apologies for the noise um i finished this and i will finish editing this video until next time cheerio goodbye <laughs>